Hi, everyone. So we've all been talking about the debate yesterday and the perceived bias that the moderators had against Trump. I decided to take the transcript of the entire debate and put it into ChatGPT and see whether ChatGPT detected any bias. And the analysis that I got was pretty shocking. So take a look. Now, this is going to be a little long, so bear with me. In the transcript you provided, there are some points where bias could potentially be inferred, though it is important to note that bias detection can be subjective. Here are a few instances that may suggest bias. 1. Tone in questioning. Example. 1. David Muir's question to Donald Trump regarding January 6th. You told your supporters to march to the Capitol. Is there anything you regret about what you did on that day? Analysis. The phrasing of this question frames Trump's actions in a negative light, suggesting direct responsibility for the Capitol attack. While January 6th is an important event to question Trump on, the repeated framing of Trump as the instigator of the attack might suggest a critical tone. The absence of any comparably critical or pointed questions towards Harris might suggest an imbalance. Example 2. David Muir's follow-up after Trump's defense on January 6th. Muir presses Trump on personal responsibility for the attack, while Trump deflects by placing the blame on Nancy Pelosi and the Washington, D.C. mayor. Muir insists, the question is about you as president, not about former Speaker Pelosi. Analysis. Muir continues to steer the conversation toward Trump's actions, while allowing Harris more leeway to respond to broader topics without similar pressure. 2. Fact-checking Trump, but not Harris. Example. During the discussion on Springfield, Ohio, David Muir interjects to clarify Trump's claim about immigrants eating pets. We did reach out to the city manager of Springfield. He told us there have been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused. Analysis. Muir quickly fact-checks Trump's more outlandish claim about Springfield. While fact-checking is part of a moderator's role, there's no evidence in the transcript that the moderators similarly fact-checked any claims made by Harris. If Trump's statements are scrutinized more rigorously than Harris, that might suggest an element of bias. 3. Lack of follow-up questions for Harris. Example. When Harris was asked about her stance on an abortion ban, the moderator asked, Would you support any restrictions on a woman's right to an abortion? Harris responded broadly by discussing Roe v. Wade without directly answering whether she supported any specific restrictions. Analysis. The moderators did not press Harris for a clear yes or no answer or a follow-up question, which contrasts with the way they pressed Trump on certain topics, such as January 6th or his views on Ukraine. 4. Closing Statement. Framing. Example. In the closing statements, David Muir sets up Harris by thanking her first and allowing her to outline her vision. Trump follows with a pointed response about what she hasn't accomplished during her time as vice president, which could easily appear more combative. Analysis. While the candidates are responsible for their statements, the structure of allowing Harris to go first and Trump to follow may have given Harris an advantage in presenting herself as the more positive, forward-looking candidate, leaving Trump in the role of defense. Conclusion. While overt bias is not immediately apparent, there are instances where the moderators may have pressed Trump harder on his controversial statements or actions, while allowing Harris more leeway in answering difficult questions. The disparity in the number of follow-ups, tone in questioning and fact-checking suggests that Trump may have faced a more critical approach. This could create the perception of bias, especially if one candidate is scrutinized more intensely than the other. So this analysis proves definitively that there was bias against Trump and all the bias went in favor of Harris. And so all the people claiming that there wasn't any bias are lying to you. This was a three-on-one event. It should be clear to everyone that this was not a fair representation of how journalists are supposed to behave. And because of the blatant bias, the narrative has turned against ABC